good stuff. Time to move on. We're, you know, keeping the pace going. It's the regular session that we do, which is uh, uh, hot and not. Um, and um, John, I think um, you're going first. Keep it tight, please, my dear. Um, what's yours this month? Got oh, you muted, John. John. <laughs> <laughs> Schoolboy error. Yeah. It, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a Zoom call without somebody <laughs> else being on mute. Um, so, the, yeah, bottom-up PPM tool. I'm, I'm, this is an interesting one because it's growing. And I, I, I don't know. It's definitely hot, but is it a good thing? Maybe for some people, not for everybody. These are tools like Monday and Smartsheet that I'm seeing more and more of. And the reason is they're so easy to implement in small teams and bubble up. Um, it's taking it's, it's similar to what um, some of the sort of tools like Jira kind of did. You can start it with a really, really small team. You can get Monday.com for yourself as an individual to help yourself organize yourself. And then suddenly it becomes a team thing or Smartsheet. You start with a couple of project plans and then you map sheets together and it kind of grows and spirals. And they can scale quite nicely. Um, and that's what's nice about them. They're easy. They're intuitive. You don't need consultants to come in and set them up. You can easily model them about how you work. And that's all amazing. I think where the challenge is, the balance on this one is you get a large organization and you end up with lots of people putting different tools into different areas. They're not quite joined up and you end up with something that isn't quite supported because it's been done by people in isolation. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting. I'm seeing a lot of this. It's interesting. It definitely has its place. And it's going to be interesting to see how that balances with some of the sort of the, the certainly the tool providers who very much focus on the enterprise space where they're coming in looking holistically at the whole portfolio integrating with finance and all those kind of things which is a very different proposition and a very different way in so yeah i'm watching these tools with interest seeing how they're gonna how they how they start what their life cycle is going to be like within organizations and whether people then eventually swap them out for dare i say grown-up tools or whether these things actually continue to evolve themselves so very interested in these ones and their journey i think Great. And uh, Eileen, what's yours? Portfolio management. Um, do you know if you if you go and look at the um all you know, an awful lot of talks at the conference, a lot of the conversations we're having, um, at whatever level of formality, whether that's just been having a list of projects or actually doing the full scale portfolio management, there is more and more um, visibility of PMOs who are starting to get this picture of all of the changes that are happening in the organisation. And again, you know, a bit kind of what John was saying, not necessarily looking for hugely sophisticated tools to do that, but actually just looking at something where they can simply manage that overall portfolio give a, a level of visibility and again feeding into the the tools and the kind of the um, power bi type reporting uh, and graphics that can be produced to start having conversations further up the food chain in organizations so great to see that the pmo is kind of starting to coalesce around portfolio management Okay, great. And um, and here's our so a shameless plug. Um, our, it, probably, it got buried a little bit, I think, in the uh, in the conference. We actually launched it there. The actual um, report and Eileen did a session on it. And uh, we're going to be pushing that out, uh, making a bit more song and dance about it next week. Um, but it is out now, um, you know, and that's very hot, of course. Yeah. Um, but it's, um, it's all about the PMO as a business function. Uh, so just watch out for that. We'll be dropping it into a newsletter and giving you some insights from that and giving you access to Eileen's recording that she did at the conference where she actually launched it as well. So that is the hot. So how are we doing on the cold or not right now? John, do you want to go first? I would love to go first. So uh, uh, hybrid <laughs> work. Oh, I love the picture. Um, it's Chris's headphones again. Look at that. Um, so we hybrid work, right? We, we all agree with our organizations we're going to be in two or three days a week. We agree what days with our teams we're going to be in. And I go in thinking this is fantastic. There's so many people that I want to talk to today, the conversations I'm going to have, the things I'm going to knit together. And I get in and find everybody is wearing headphones with the sound with the noise cancelling on and focus forward. And then I'm sort of finding myself going around sort of trying to sort of wave at people like they take them off and kind of glare at me for daring to interrupt them. So we end up with this weird thing. I'm sure it wasn't like this before COVID, but because people I think have got so used to uh, being at home and working in their own space and then sort of 
consciously sort of coming out of that space for a 30 minute meeting where you get yourself into that headspace of a conversation that you kind of expect to be in that sort of isolated mode of working. So I'm, I'm seeing more and more people sort of doing this kind of, I'm in isolated working mode, even though I'm in a collaborative space. Um, I, it, it, it means you don't get the benefits of the collaboration space. For the youngsters in particular, they don't necessarily get that learning by osmosis from hearing people around them and jumping into a conversation and adding things to it. So I, I would, I, I'm putting this down as a not. I know some people really like it. It helps them with their work and I get that. But I'm saying it's a not because you lose that collaboration. You're kind of in the shared working space, but not checking into the shared working space at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah. And also that picture demonstrates the overcrowding when everybody does get in and there's not enough desks. Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, Eileen, yours is integrated PMA models. Hope you like the silo picture. Oh, but fantastic. Yes. I, 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 can we just say that a big round of applause to kind of Lindsay and the marketing team who've been playing with AI generated images, if you can't tell, but doing a fab job. I love them. Um, yes, a siloed uh, PMOs. Now, I have to say at the conference, we had loads and loads of people who are doing a fantastic job in their PMOs, but we're really still... Um, an awful lot of organisations, we haven't got this full integrated PMO model. We don't have a consolidated view of actually how many PMOs have we got? How do we best use all of the various different officers, you know, whatever level they're working at, whatever services they're doing to best effect? And it, it just uh, we may live off some reflected glory of some of the other kind of PMOs around us, but it would be really nice to see um, some organisation. I'm not saying create a huge hierarchical structure, but just seeing some relationships between the various PMOs and, and becoming um, better seen as, a, as, you know, to back to the report as a PMO function to actually kind of say we're a consolidated group of individuals who are trying to support delivery in the organisation. Yeah. Okay. And my uh, my not right now is this dystopian AI futures for PMOs. <laughs> Basically, this is all about the fact that um, the day before the conference, we had PMO Learn. We did a session on um, AI project data analytics, and one of the big big stats that came out of it, we asked the audience how many people in that audience have actually been playing around with this stuff, used anything like Chat GPT, and it's about sixty eight percent of people had done nothing. But actually, what really surprised me was the attitude and the, the actually being a fear around this stuff, quite dismissive about it. And I think part of that is because of this message that we keep hearing is that, the, you know, our jobs are going to be taken away by some of this advances in technology. I mean, it was backed up, yes, but Antonio talking about it in his keynote speech. But then again, we, you know, we go to things like the Project Hack and it's always like, okay, it's got to get that underlying feel. And actually what we did at the Project Hack and it's something we will be sharing with you in the coming weeks it's like well, hey, well let's let's just hold on a minute there's a number of different steps that all of us need to be getting to and if, if we're starting from a place of being scared or dismissive about it we're not going to suddenly start going to project hacks and having fun and being curious about this stuff there's a lot of steps in between and what we want to be able to understand and from a pma point of view and from a business point of view and our you know our organizations are what are some of those baby steps and that's what the kind of stuff that we did at Project Hat. Eileen and I had the uh, the room with some business leaders. You literally got the whiteboard out and said, come on, let's think about this. What's going on right now for your organisation and what's going to get you there? And it's been really surprising just to, to switch it onto the business focus, take it away from a tech for a minute and the tools. Let's look at it from a business point of view. And therefore, this is where the PMO is sitting. You know, let's not get dragged down into what tech is. Let's think about what it is that our organisation and our delivery organizations are going to need um or want but you know it's not there for everybody and but i hate this view of you know that we're all going to lose this job and it's all bad and it's it, but it's not and it's just about you know trying to rein back this message and let's unpick it and see what it really is all about which is uh what we're going to be looking at in the coming weeks and months and years probably but uh yeah so that's it for uh, Hot and Not. Um, hopefully, if you agree, disagree, you know, more than happy, just stick it in the chat, put it on LinkedIn comments, or if you're watching this on YouTube, do the same, let us know what you think.